What is going on Pro EDU community? It's Dustin Volkma and today we're talking about how to build an infinite white studio in Cinema 4D and Octane. It's great for things like e-commerce and product renders and it's something that I got quite a few questions about. So let's go ahead and dive into Cinema 4D and get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and Octane. We've got our Octane Live Viewer here off to the left hand side of our viewport. And let's go ahead and get started with creating this infinite white backdrop studio. So the key to this is having two HDRI environments and having a disc for a shadow catcher on the floor. Now let's go ahead and create this. So what we'll do is just create an octane HDRI environment. This first one, we can name this reflection slash ambient. Now this is going to be giving us our ambient light and reflections for things like metal on our products and so on. Uh, we can place an HDRI here and I'm going to be using HDRI link from Grayscale Gorilla. I'm not getting paid by these guys, but they just have a really cool product that allows us to change things quickly. So with that being said, you just place an HDRI in your texture slot for your HDRI environment and your first one is set. So the key to this first one, reflection slash ambient HDRI, is having the type set to primary environment. And then what we'll do here is go ahead and start our Octane Live Viewer so we can just get that going a moment. And once this kicks on, we'll see that we have our standard HDRI environment with our product, providing a decent bit of amount of ambient light here. And that's usually what I'm going for. Now, the second part to this would be our second HDRI. So let's go ahead and create another HDRI environment. Now, with this one here, the difference is, is that we're taking our type from primary environment to visible environment. And that's going to give us our product on a black background. Now, in the texture slot here, instead of an HDRI image, we're going to go ahead and just use this little arrow drop down and we can head up to color. So by default, the color is white. So this is going to give us our clean, free of value changes, white, seamless, infinite studio backdrop. Now, at this point, we can go ahead and rename this. So we can just name that BG for background. And what we're going to be doing here is actually creating our shadow catcher for the floor now. So for this, I like to use the disc. And what we're going to be doing at this point is creating an Octane Diffuse material. So we can just head up to materials here in our Octane Live Viewer, head down to create Octane Diffuse material. Now in our material manager down here at the bottom, we can double click that material swatch to open up our material editor. And now it will come in the diffuse tab here, kind of set as default. What we're going to do is head down to common and then click on shadow catcher. And we can rename this to shadow, if I can spell today. There we go. Now we can go ahead and close out our material editor. Now at this point, just go ahead and drag that shadow material onto our floor and we'll see that we now have shadows from our product on the floor. So if that's all you guys are here for, just that little quick tip, go ahead and dip out. But we're going to go ahead and make this look a little bit better with some lighting. For some very basic lighting, uh, we won't get too heavily into lighting theory or anything. I'm just going to be using a large rim light and a key light for this. So in order to do this, I'm going to deselect the disk object here in my object manager. So we'll just click out of that and I'll create an octane targeted area light. So what that's going to do is just create an, a light target null for us and we'll have our octane light here. So we can go ahead and just rename this to rim. Now the next thing that I want to do is head into my details here and we can see that the light size is quite large at this point. So we can go ahead and change this I'll start off with maybe a 24 by 24, and that just makes it a little bit more manageable in size. And then we'll also head into our Octane light tag, 
and then we could head down to visibility and turn off camera visibility so that we don't see that immediately. Now, as I'm starting to move lights around, I usually don't like to do it in this type of viewport with a locked camera. And so what I'll do is simply middle mouse and we can head down into one of our other view panels here. And I'm going to already have this one here set in under perspective. If you want to change that, you can head to your camera menu here and then you can change that to perspective here. So that's going to give you the option to be able to now freely roam around your scene, place lights, anything that you need there. So let's go ahead and move this. The nice part about this being targeted is that we don't have to worry about really messing with the position of the light and every bit of rotation here because it's currently locked to the Z axis of that null that's in the middle of our scene here. Now, with this, this is just a bit of preference here as you're starting to move and manipulate lights around your scene. Um, what I'm really looking for is just to have the slight reflection here on this little logo or emblem that's on the side of the grill mesh there. So we can go ahead and move this, take a look at something that's a little bit closer to our camera view, and then move that off to the side just a little bit so that we can start to pick up some of that light there on the incident angle. There we go, and just move it down a little bit. All right, now at this point, we can go ahead and probably move this back and space some. Make sure that we're not completely losing it there. There we go. And now we can take our light power and our octane light tag here, and we can just drop our power down quite a ways. So let's go ahead and see where we're at here as far as the position goes. So I'm gonna move that just a little ways, get that kind of backed off of the product some. We can drop the power just a little bit more. And then maybe what I'll do is just change to maybe something like 6,000 here for my temperature so that it's not so cool. Now, at this point, uh, the easiest way to manipulate and change this would be to go ahead and just control or command drag as we're moving this to duplicate. So as soon as we let go, we've now got a second rim light here and we can go ahead and just name this key. And what we'll do in the details tab here for the light is we can change this back to something like 24 by 24. Maybe even go smaller, we can do 12 by 12. And now this is going to just go right over top of our headphones here. So that's going to give us some nice light from the front side here and then we can offset that so that it's not directly in front of the camera there. It gives it a little bit more of a dramatic light and should work for us quite well. All right, so now that we have got a few things here now in the scene, we've got some basic lighting here. We can see that we're now introducing some shadowing from our octane light here that's kind of penetrating uh, the ground plane or being created on the ground plane here. And that's something that we'll want to get rid of. So there's really two ways that we can go about this. Uh, we could take our shadow catcher disc here and we can make the scale of this much smaller by just dragging our handle in here. And, and now once we do that, we can see that we got rid of that primary shadow, but now we're able to see this shadow catcher here in the background. And what we wanna to do to get rid of that is simply create a gradient for opacity on the material that we currently have here for the shadow catcher. So what we'll do is make sure that the shadow catcher is selected and then we can go into our Octane Node Editor. Now, what I usually like to use for this is a Cinema 4D gradient so we can scroll all the way down to the bottom here choose gradient we can plug that into our opacity and now at this point we can change our type from 2, 2d u down to 2d circular 
And we can see now that this is inverted. So let's go ahead and right click, invert gradient. And so now this is going to give us the type of gradient that we're looking for. So for all intents and purposes, you can consider this being similar to a layer mask for the opacity like we would see in Photoshop. So we want right around our product here to be white so that we can see the shadows. And then we want to have a nice transition off to black so that we're not catching any of the shadow information on the back side there. So we can just choke down this gradient map here just a little bit. Go ahead and close that. And now we can see that we've gotten rid of any of the hard lines or hard shadowing that's happening here on the shadow catcher. So it's a really easy way to get through there and not have to worry so much about it. I think we can go ahead and just maybe tone down this light just a little bit here. What I could do is add another light so we can just select our one rim, control or command, drag this off to the left hand side here of our product. That's going to give us a nice bit of light wrap here on the other side. And then I can go ahead and just drop this value for the power, maybe down to something like seven. It doesn't need to be quite as bright as the other side here. But this is going to give us a very good base to start manipulating and tweaking. Now, normally, if this was a project for me, I would be adding some type of different light textures into our texture slot or our distribution here so that we can have various types of fall off and light patterns. Um, but in this case, this is a little bit more just for the sake of an example for the backdrop rather than anything else. So the cool part about this uh, background environment now is that because we have a color plugged in as the texture, we can also click into this texture here and start to adjust these colors. So if we go ahead and just bring our saturation maybe up to something like 70, uh, we'll see that now we can just go through our hue slider and really start to make some adjustments. Um, and it gives us a really good base for adding different types of feels to the look of this without having to do this in post. Now, one of the cool parts is here when you're adjusting any type of hue is going to click on the color wheel. Now we have all of these different options here that are going to allow us to work in different color systems. My brain's a little bit foggy here, but um, <laughs> if we go ahead and click complementary, now we can go ahead and use this color picker and we can select one of the colors that are on our object. And we'll see that we have the complementary color here. So if we just go ahead and click this complementary color down on the bottom, or we can click the little dot icon there, and that's going to give us the direct complementary color to the colors that we have in our product. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of it. All right, so if you happen to be rendering out products, e-commerce type, infinite white backdrop renders, that's a very easy way to set it up. How you can go through and add color if you need to, or maybe modify and manipulate things if you start to have the need for troubleshooting things like that shadow catcher on the floor. So that's all for this video, guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and never stop learning. I'll catch you guys in the next video.